Rose Astrology. This is the birth chart for Jennifer Lopez. And she is a Libra rising, sun in Leo, and a moon at 29 degrees of Scorpio. And a couple things I want to point out here. I'm going to focus on two things. I want to focus on her being an actress. And I want to focus on her relationships. Because she's had a lot of relationships. She's been in the news and she's notorious for having all these relationships. And we see that uh, Libra is rising. That's our first clue that um, this is going to be somebody who's seeking balance in their life, specifically regarding relationships, learning how to give, learning how to receive, learning how to listen, learning how to see themselves as an equal with their partner. And the ruler, which is Venus, is in the ninth in Gemini, and it's in the Libra Deccan. So we also see the ruler being in a sign like Gemini, where we would think Venus and Gemini trying different relationships out, going from one person to the next. And it's also in the ninth house, the house of learning. So we see more of that theme about re learning about relationships. And she also has this Mars and Venus in an opposition, which is the full phase. And if you haven't seen my video, I just did a video on Mars-Venus phases. So I want to talk about a little bit about that that she has that Mars and Venus in a full phase. So more indication that she's learning all these things on uh, regarding listening, trying to find balance between her and her partner, trying to find partners who she can um, <clears throat> be an equal with, trying to find partners where she can balance her alone time and her intimate time with them. And uh, to her credit, though, I will say, uh, I'm not I will say that I don't think this is outside of the norm I'm just showing you what it would look like in the chart I see that she's had several relationships but some of them have lasted a long time many of them or most of them are two plus years uh, so it's not as if she's um, trying a bunch of different relationships she's actually we can see the difference here between this and maybe the new phase she's actually in relationships for long periods of time before she really finds a need the need to separate and we see here with the moon mars and neptune in the second house now from her perspective i don't know this i'm just speculating i'm wondering if from her perspective with that moon at 29 degrees uh the mc there with can and cancer uh the moon at 29 degrees of scorpio a water sign and all that second house energy the North Node in Pisces. I wonder if she uh, feels that at times it's overwhelming and she can't figure all those elements out, so she wants to retreat into her safe space. Uh, but in her, maybe from her perspective, it's I'm just going to go find another man uh, because I well, well, number one because she can. It's easily not a problem for her to retreat and not really figure out those dynamics within the relationship. And she can just go find another man and see if it see how it works out. And I wonder if there's some, um, you know, some things have to do with emotions here with the moon at 29 degrees in Scorpio, where especially even conjunct that Mars and Neptune, where she can't handle uh, the motion, the emotional, the motions of all this um, may become overwhelming and it's just easy for her to just separate and go find another, as I said, go find another man. And specifically, I mentioned that too because I, I also saw that she was with Ben Affleck for a while and then she came back to Ben Affleck after all those years and all the different partners. Uh, and to me, that's, that's kind of um, indicates some of the things that I'm talking about. Uh, so, and we also see that she has Venus in a square to the nodes, and it's uh, indicating that this sixth house in Pisces, the north node here, is the node that needs to be resolved. So she's coming from a place of Pluto in the 12th, south node in the 12th. Um, it is in Virgo. And 
when I say it, this Venus squaring node uh, comes back to this north node, what I'm saying is that there is a uh, possibly a going back and forth between working on these elements and escaping from these elements. And considering that the north node is in the sixth in Pisces, there's kind of a conflict there because you know the sixth house is a, more like Virgo. And then the same thing with the south south node being in Virgo, but it's but it's in the twelfth house, the Pisces house. I think this can be very confusing for a person. Can make this square even worse. This Venus uh, squaring the nodes, um, where I wouldn't. And looking at some of the transits she has com coming up, I wouldn't doubt if she'll be struggling with this for the rest of her life. And uh, not to say that she should resolve it. That's just what it indicates is that um, I would think that um, this struggle will continue, and um, yeah, we'll see more more relationship news for. Uh, Jennifer Lopez here in the future for sure. Now she does have this Jupiter Uranus conjunction in the twelfth, and it's in Libra, and she has the part of Fortune in Aquarius. She also has Aquarius on the fifth house cusp. She's got uh, fifth house cusp of a fifth house of romance, pleasure, sex. And we see that this Uranus is also making a sextile to the moon, Mars and Neptune there, and also a sextile to the Mercury and Sun. So she's definitely a Uranian type person. So we're going to add that Aquarius energy into all this. And you could also look at it as if she's, you know, she's almost okay with um, all these different um, trying out all these different relationships. Um, so you think of like, not to say that she's polyamorous, but it's a version. You could say, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's polyamorous, but ju just thinking it's a version of what some people would consider of going against the norm. Having, I don't know, seven, it's like six or seven long-term relationships in a lifetime. That to me is very Libra, it's very Aquarius. And we see that with all the aspects to Uranus and even the people she's involved with. To, uh, you know, very, very many Saturnian people would never come back, would never allow you to come back to a relationship. They would look at it like that, like the idea of like they're in control and they're not going to let allow you to come back. Where we see um, with Aquarius, people who have Aquarius and strong Uranus in their chart. They're usually okay with it. They see things different than most people. And sp uh, speaking to her, her career, we see the south node ruled by Mercury. It's in the 10th house of career. It's where she's coming from. And it's in Leo. The sun's in Leo. It's in the 10th house. So we see there the career uh, with the Leo focus and the, um, the focus on the 10th house, so we see being center stage, the sign of performance. We also see the that um, or that combination there making a trine to Mars, which would give it um, a lot of um, energy, would give that Sun and Mercury in the 10th a lot of energy, a lot of motivation towards earning money, and um, it would correlate that with survival with these planets here in the second house and with uh, Neptune conjunct those plants as well and also trining those two plants there in the 10th house um, and the Jupiter Uranus and Pluto and South node all in the 12th we see there's a lot of Neptune combinations here a lot of Pisces combinations we have the North node in Pisces the Neptune is also making a trine to that North node in Pisces so simultaneously, we see the career emphasis, and we also see the relationship emphasis. Um, one can make almost make the argument when you're looking at this, when you're looking at people, celebrities, and most people will see them as celebrities and powerful figures and be envious of them. 
But we can also look at it as if someone who has these lessons to learn around relationships might have to be placed in a situation of a celebrity. Um, because, or you could say someone who has a lot of money, uh, because many people who wouldn't have the resources that she has wouldn't be able to get away with what she gets away with. So what I mean by that is coming back to the square. Oftentimes we'll see people uh, with these squares to the nodes and we'll see them getting away with their own bullshit and never really learning the lesson. And I think, you know, whoever set this up is very, can be very forgiving and very allowing, permitting of you to do whatever you want if that's what you want to do for a long period of time. And one way that this can happen is by being put in a situation where you can get away with and you're not really forced by the universe or you're not really, because of your, you know, your situation, you're not really forced to learn the lesson. Because as I said, she doesn't really have to um, do any shadow work regarding this because she can just go find another man. And I think of many women who can't, who may be going through this and they're seeing it, seeing it as if they wish they could just do whatever they want. And they're actually having to be in relationships that they don't want to be in. They're having to be alone when they don't want to be alone, etc. Uh, I hope I kind of made sense out of that because um, I think it is a, an important point in astrology that um, people can be people can be made aware of that would help them. So help them get through their life, maybe. Um, so I'm going to leave it there for now because I could um, didn't expect to talk this long. I could really go in deep in talking about this dynamic. So I hope that helps, and I hope you enjoy this mini reading for Jennifer Lopez. And I will link the Mars Venus down the Mars Venus video down in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, comment down below, and have a great day.